and negative 31 minus 13 all over 4 is negative 11. <clears throat> Hopefully this is review. We've done this before a whole bunch of times. It's quadratic formula. Anytime you're asked to solve a quadratic equation algebraically, start with the quadratic formula. If you can't factor, if you can factor, go for that. <clears throat> We're going to do that in about five minutes. <clears throat> When you're factoring x squared plus bx plus c in an equation when it's equal to zero, if the coefficient is one, right? So find two factors of c that add up to b. Numbers that multiply to c that add up to that coefficient on x, you just call them f1 and f2, factor 1, factor 2. And they simply go in they go in the parentheses like we've done before with factoring and if it's an equation set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So you would do x plus f1 equals 0, x plus f2 equals 0. Whatever numbers there are, you would either add or subtract to get x by itself to get your two answers. So for the first example, start with the GCF. You're going to take out an x. Keep that x out front. Now we have a trinomial, coefficient on x squared is 1. We're going to look for factors of negative 20 that add up to positive 8. It's going to be negative 2 and 10. Negative 2 and 10 are now just going to go into the two sets of parentheses as our factors. So keep the greatest common factor out front. You have x minus 2. You're adding a negative, so that's x minus 2. And x plus 10. Set each factor equal to zero. And solve each. First one's easy. It's already done. Add two. Subtract ten. There's your three answers. Exponent of three more than likely means you're going to get three real roots unless you're asked to do something with imaginary roots. This, later. Now, as you can see, if there's a coefficient on x squared, i.e. 3x squared, it's not as simple as looking at the negative 2 and the 5. It doesn't work that way. There are a, I came up with six steps. Tried to keep it simple, as simple as possible. Uh, to be able to factor these. It's not that hard once you get the hang of it. It might be a little tricky at first. All right. So the first thing you're going to do, multiply the a value and the c value. So in this case, 3 times negative 2, you get negative 6. Okay. Then look at the factors of that product that add to the middle term, b. So factors of negative 6 that add to 5. b value is 5. So the factors of negative 6 that add to 5, negative 1 and 6. These numbers are going to replace the 5. So we're going to rewrite the equation. The plus 5x becomes minus x plus 6x. So all we did is we, play, we broke that 5x into two separate terms. And the reason for that is going to come up right here. When I have four terms, I can factor by grouping. So group the first two terms in parentheses, group the last two terms in parentheses. Make sure you keep that sign. That's important. That sign always.
goes out here. So if that's a minus, you would factor out a negative. Okay? Now, greatest common factor of 3x squared and negative x is an x, leaving you with 3x minus 1. Greatest common factor of 6x and negative 2 is 2. So you're going to pull out a 2, leaving you with 3x minus 1. The parentheses are always going to match up. So when you find the greatest common factor of each group, you're going to have the same set of uh, you're going to have the same expression inside parentheses. Three and four are the hard parts. The next stuff, piece of cake. So now that you got that common expression in the parentheses, you can just finish up. And I keep it simple. Stuff inside, stuff outside, not very technical, but it works. Expression inside is 3x minus 1. There's one factor. The remaining terms outside the parentheses becomes a second factor. Set them equal to 0, solve. Okay. Try that one on your own for homework. Done.